Where did this idea of traditional retirement come from? Well, let's have a short history lesson. It takes us back to the year 1889 in the country's Germany and its Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, who institutes the first traditional retirement plan as we know it. By the way, to become eligible for this plan, you had to be invalidated as a worker. It was really more like a disability insurance, and the age of eligibility was 70 years of age. It was later backed down in 1918 to the age of 65. By the way, do you know how old the average worker lived to be in Germany in 1889? 46 years old. And how did this idea come to America? Well, we need to go back to the year 1935 to see how it came to our nation at a wholesale level. The FDR administration was dealing with young men in the streets who were demanding work. This sort of scenario had already played itself out in Germany and Italy, and we know what the consequences were there. FDR's advisors gave him the idea of creating an older workers' pension from the government so that the older workers would have an incentive to leave work early and it would create openings for the younger workers and the plan took. They set the age of eligibility at 65 years of age. In 1937, they then backed that age down to 62 because they found that the average American worker only lived to be 63 years old. You see, when retirement was designed, it was designed to be a one-year bridge from the loading dock to the loading dock. It was not designed to be a 30, 40-year journey. And another thing we need to understand about retirement and its history is that it was an industrial age invention with an industrial age design. You see, in that day and age, people were treated as parts in the machinery of business. And it just made sense, I guess, that you'd take a 62-year-old part that had slowed down, that wasn't as sharp as it once was, or wasn't as motivated as it, as it once was, and remove that part and replace it with a 22-year-old part, and the machine would just resume its efficiencies. But is it true that we still live in in an industrial age? When I ask my audiences about this, they say, no, we live in the information age. Well, I beg to disagree. I believe the information age ended with Google. We ha now have way too much information. I would characterize the age that we live in as the experience age. What you get paid for today is who you know, what you know, and how you know to get things done. I often ask CEOs and businesses, how many 22-year-olds is it going to take for you to replace the 40 years of experience that is walking out your front door today in that 65-year-old that's leaving with everything that they know? And they don't have an answer for it. Why? Because it's experience that matters in commerce today. And today, being 65 and having a head full of gray hair is not a sign of somebody that's ready to recline. It may be a sign of somebody that is absolutely in their prime because today, gray hair is an indication of gray matter.